Hello Sector Watchers, welcome to the show. This is the 60th episode of Sector Spotlight on Tuesday the 15th of December and I'm recording this on Monday the 14th. It is also the last semi-live show before the holiday season starts. Um, so next two weeks, the 22nd and the 29th will be pre-recorded evergreen type of shows and um, I've already done them and I think it's it's worth watching. One is a is an interview with a good friend of mine, Charles Brown of CB3 Financial, who is a real-time RIA professional user of RRGs and he will share with us his insights on how he uses RRG and how he actually got to use RRG. And the second one is uh, a show that I recorded where I take the time to explain and walk you through my way of using relative rotation graphs as a top-down tool, as a, as a tool to build portfolios from the top down. So all the way from asset allocation down to individual stocks. So that's what's in store for you the next two weeks. Um, today we will have, of course, our usual look back on what the rotations and the performances were for asset classes and sectors last week. And then I will deal with some uh, questions in the mailbag that have been on the shelf for probably too long. And I will try to give a quick look at the performance of our long short baskets before we end the year. Uh, and see if we need to do any updates on that and show you where we are and how the positions are doing. So stay tuned and let's get started. As usual, we'll be looking at the rotation of asset classes and sectors first. On the left hand side, the asset classes, and I've got the table ranked in performance order, and we see that. Last week, last five days, uh, ending Friday, December 11, um, was a good week for commodities, 1.4 and 1.1. And then, you know, the rest didn't really do much. Uh, our benchmark, VBINX, uh, was down 20 basis points. And its main and biggest components, stock market down 70 basis points and golfed up 70 basis points. So there you are. That's pretty much the performance of ITOT, that 60-40 balanced portfolio. Um, the one that stands out in a negative way is real estate, which was down 2.3% and continues to move further into the lagging quadrant, albeit at a slightly rising RS momentum level. Uh, but nevertheless, that rotation doesn't look very good. If we, if we go into the rotation of last, as it, as it you know unfolded last week, one, two, three, four, five. Then we see that the first two days, one, two, were actually in favor of stocks and the fixed income complex uh, was still moving further into the lagging quadrant. And then from Wednesday onward and then the second half of the week, that turned around and you saw that ITOT dived back into the weakening quadrant and um, Gov high yield went into improving together with the dollar, and here we have DJP and LQD, which are which which made the turn but didn't make it into the improving quadrant yet. So not a really big week for um, for the various asset classes. If we move over to the sectors, then we see this is the situation on Friday, December 11. And then we see that SPY was down 1%, more or less in line with ITOT with 70 BIPs. So this alone tells you that large caps SPY are weaker than mid and small caps, which is what we've been seeing uh, in previous versions of Sector Spotlight and in various articles where I pointed out that small and mid caps are clearly outperforming large caps. And, and just by simply watching these tables and these short rotations, you see that um, you see that similar effect. So 
In terms of sectors, uh, again, a very good week for energy, up 1.2%. And also communication services, uh, well, it, it was down 10 bips, but it's on top of the list. Pretty much energy is the only one with a positive return. Now we've got SPY here, minus 1%, so outperforming healthcare, industrial, staples, utilities, communication services, uh, albeit not by much. And then uh, below, so underperforming SPY last week were discretionary materials, tech, financials, and real estate again. And what, what, I, what I'm happy to see is that we have communication services on top of the list with uh, a negative of 10 bips, and we have uh, technology down at the bottom of the list, almost at the bottom of the list, with minus 1.4, because that is the, uh, the uh, seasonality call that we made in the last, uh, last episode of Sector Spotlight of November. We said that we would expect a strong performance of communication services and a weak performance of technology based on their seasonal patterns. Now, it's not a super strong performance, but it is outperforming, and that whole seasonality thing is all about outperforming uh, SPY in this case. So uh, very pleased with that. If we, if we look at the rotation during the week for these sectors, so that's one, two, three, four, five. Let me fit that in so we see that a little bit better. We see energy coming down, and then it was one, two, three, four, five, making... It's slightly better. So and let's let's fit that there. Just energy is all the way down there, and let's focus on what's going on here. And you can see that uh, healthcare staples gained, uh, utilities also, real estate also uh, on the momentum scale. So one, two, three, four, five. So you see that you see utilities and staples was turning around. So we've got a little bit of a defensive move going on in the second half of the week. So we have to see how that turns out at the start of this week. Uh, what we also see is that communication services moves into leading and sort of continues there, loses a little bit of momentum just a little bit but technology is has already started to roll over in one two three so it entered and then immediately started to roll over so that still confirms uh the view of preferring communication services over technology now watch materials industrials and financials uh, at least in the near term these are all three sectors that are pretty good on the weekly chart but they seem to be losing a little bit of uh, relative strength and relative momentum here on the daily tails that are all heading towards the lagging quadrant and materials has already entered that lagging quadrant. If we quickly put that into a longer term perspective, let's just do that right away. I'm gonna move the sectors here. I'm going to bring up my chart list where I have my charts for the show here, especially the sectors. And let's see what we can learn from that. So here we have the energy tail, which is huge. Let's have a look at what that means. Um, you see that you, this is why that tail is so long and strong because these uh, rises in the ROG lines are almost vertical, so they're super strong. That's causing that long tail. Um, and yes, it's a very strong tail, but it is still very far to the left. And that makes me reluctant of, you know, going out all bullish on the energy sector, because I doubt whether that sector has got the strength to, to take it all the way through leading and turn that relative downtrend around into an uptrend and if you if you look at the, the trend itself because this is what we're looking at that is still very much a downtrend with big swings in price i know but from a relative point i have got a lot of trouble um, calling this an uptrend so i'm, I'm going to be relatively um careful with energy 
very good for trading nowadays because it's you know percentage points a day we zoom into a few other of those sectors then uh, we've got real estate obviously which is um turning back into the lagging quadrant uh pretty much confirming its weakness and that's what we see on the chart here didn't get out of that range so with real estate um, remains a weak, a weaker sector uh, in the sector landscape. Same for staples. If you look at the staples tail that is rotating back into the lagging quadrant as well. So if we look at the consumer staples, then you see that we're sort of still struggling to move higher. We we took out that high, but we didn't convincingly move beyond that level uh, and that immediately causes a loss of relative strength and you see that where we where we thought that the relative strength line was was potentially basing at that support level we now see that that lack of uh, upward momentum lack of upward momentum in price failing to uh, to provide us with upward momentum in relative strength is causing the rg lines to turn around and RS ratio never made it above 100, and now you see that RS momentum has dropped below 100, and it's now rotating back into the lagging quadrant. So we remain on a very cautious or weak outlook for the staple sector. We look at utilities, similar trajectory, sort of similar trajectory. Then we see that breakout of that triangle, a little bit of follow through, but then again a rapid decline and it looks as if we're building up you know this I, I had it dotted there because i wasn't really sure whether that was a valid trend line but it's becoming more and more valid because we now have one two three four and now five touch points so it's got to get some sort of uh meaning i guess and um and here it was resistance so we're, we bounced off that level downward we're now on the way back down and that immediately impacted the relative strength for the utility sector, which is now going lower again uh, and potentially moving back into the lagging quadrant. Let's have a look at um, stuff that's doing good or better, maybe I should say. Uh, definitely financials been on my radar for uh, a couple of weeks now um, because it, it was a quiet move, but it actually started to do pretty well. And we see that here in the relative strength because it, it bounced off that base, uh, apparently solid support, jumped off it, undoubtedly helped by that jump in price, but we never got a real serious setback. I think that financials are, are pretty good holding up uh, above this horizontal level, which has one, two, three, four, five touch points over the last two years. Uh, we broke it fairly easily, uh, fairly easy, and now it, it should help us with support. And so far, uh, it looks to be doing that. So financials uh, seems to be a new sector inside the leading quadrant of which we can have um, a positive outlook for the next few weeks, uh, provided I think that we should hold up above this level here because that will hold up relative strength. Communication services, as we saw it on the daily, that um, did pretty well. It, it turned around, it turned around, but not as much as technology. So that's a positive for communication services. And if we look at the chart, then obviously that break above all-time highs is still very much present. We're holding up there. We're not bouncing back. We we haven't even tested that former resistance level as support. So. Uh, fairly happy with that. And when we look at relative strength, uh, admittedly, it could be a little bit better. I, I, I had expected it to actually rally after this break. That didn't happen. We moved into a sort of sideways range, and that caused RS ratio and RS, moment, RS, RS momentum to drop below 100 and, and, and drag RS ratio down. Uh, well, it, it went actually below 100, albeit like two, three weeks, not much. But it's now going back up, and you now see that the uh, RS momentum line is picking up this move here. And we need to give it maybe maybe this week, maybe maybe two more weeks um, to convincingly break above this horizontal resistance in relative strength. But when that happens, 
Bank communication services is on the way further into the leading quadrant, and it's going to be one of the leading sectors inside the S&P, I think. Um, let's uh, immediately move to its counterpart, or well, no counterpart, but buddy buddy, because they, they used to move in tandem a lot, and they don't do that anymore. And that's uh, technology. You see the technology tail here inside weakening. Uh, it, it, it's not as negative as it was over the last few weeks, but it's not a positive yet either. Um, it's still moving lower on the RS ratio scale. It's still heading towards the lagging quadrant. So I keep some reservation with technology. I, I need to see how that works out over the next few weeks. And the fact that price was not able to break higher convincingly makes the current area, which is between 125 and, and 130, um, becomes heavier and heavier and heavier. Um, that means two things. The one thing is that it becomes heavier to break. So um, the odds for coming off that level are increasing. Uh, but also the flip side is that when it breaks, you got a, you got a, a, a much more acceleration because it's that spring that, uh, that moves, that vacuum of demand behind that level. Uh, so it's an important area to watch. But if we look at the relative strength, I think we've got to conclude that for the time being, from a relative perspective, technology um, is a neutral at best um, because it's still dragging down. Momentum is still below 100. We've got to monitor that. Pretty much the same for um, what's that? Uh, uh, discretionary, consumer discretionary, XLY. That's the yellow tail that's just below technology, still at a negative trajectory. So you see that the RG lines are moving more steeply down than they were for technology. And you see that this relative uptrend was broken uh, and it's also struggling with overhead resistance in the price chart. Um, XLY is still a little bit further to the right, so it's got a little bit more potential to actually turn around, but uh, be careful with that. Industrials and materials, for the time being, I look at those as uh, going through a temporary setback. Both are still, you know, industrials, highest on the RS ratio scale, materials, lowest on the RS ratio scale. So they are still inside, you know, they're the, among the leading sectors in, um, in the S&P 500. So I'm going to leave it at that. We're going to quickly go for a 30 second break. And after that, we'll be back with some questions from the mailbag. instead of spy. Below is a chart I created. I got the idea of one of your awesome videos. Thank you. If I'm understanding right, if a sector's RS ratio is above 100, that sector ETF is performing better during that period than spy in this case. Or in simple terms, I would have done better buying the sector versus spy for that period. Is my head on straight here? Um, Yes and, and, and no. Um, the, the chart that Greg sent me was of the utility sector somewhere in October. And it was a weekly chart. So let's go to the weekly and find utilities. So this is 19th of October. And if we align that here, then that is about here. And you see that... Utilities went through you know, a couple of weeks of strong performance, which pushed relative strength up over that period. Now, first of all, RS ratio is not above 100 yet. It's RS momentum that's above 100. So the green line is RS momentum. RS ratio is still below. And when the green line is above 100 and the red line is below, it positions the tail on the RRG inside the improving quadrant. And that's exactly where utilities were at that point in time. Um, if it, the most important thing is that these RRG lines, they do not show performance as such. So you can't say if RS ratio is above 100, that sector performs better than the S&P or whatever you're comparing it with. What it does show is that the trend the relative trend of that sector is 
performing is is up is is outperforming. So it's it's the relative trend is up versus spy. The relative trend versus spy is higher. But that doesn't necessarily mean that the performance from week to week will always be better than SPY because those trends don't move in a straight line. They're, they're zigzags. They're higher highs and higher lows, just, just so you have trends in prices. So um, the, the, the most important thing to remember, Greg and everybody else, is that RRGs and the RRG lines uh, try to pick up trends in relative strength. And that does not necessarily mean that every week the performance or every day the performance will be better than the benchmark you're comparing it with. So what we did see is that utilities went through a recovery. But if you look at the trend, and that is what the red RS ratio line is showing, that trend was still down. And we went up and, and now with hindsight, obviously, we can see that that tail never made it to the leading quadrant. It turned around just before hitting leading, and it's now uh, heading back towards the lagging quadrant again. And that's what you see here. You see that, that that hiccup wasn't enough to turn that trend around. So we put in that lower high, and we're now you know almost at the bottom again. And if we break below that low in relative strength, then I'm going to expect utilities to deteriorate uh, even further. So I hope that answers Greg's question on uh, performance versus trends in performance. I think that's the best way to uh, to, to get your head around it. And, and keep your head straight, uh, Greg, because it's important. And thanks for asking that question. For this part of the mailbag, I've actually um, aggregated a few questions because they were all going in the same direction. And the first one comes from Michael. And he says, in your experience, would you wait until a stock enters the leading category on the RRG before buying? I'm watching several stocks and trying to learn if I should wait to buy and these are mostly, wait to buy and these are mostly in the weakening RRG category, but heading up towards leading. And then, Wendy asks, when in the quadrant would you start buying a stock in the bottom when it turns up, when it crosses above the halfway point upside? Um, I'm not exactly sure what she means here, but I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try answer it. And then the second question also from Wendy is, is along the same lines. When is the optimum time to buy when it comes up from the bottom quadrant to the top? What is your favorite sector for July and is XLV in play right now? Um, those are, I'm, I'm not going to answer that kind of questions because they are too much uh, towards advisory and that's not what we do. Um, so now you've found your favorite sector. Do you then go to a daily or an intraday chart to figure out where you are going to buy? So all of this is is sort of, it's probably a sixty-four million dollar question, you know. Where, where, where should I buy and where should I sell? And you know, it doesn't really matter whether you ask that question for an RRG or a bar chart or a candlestick chart or whatever indicator you're following. Um, I don't think there is a there's a black and white answer there. Um, not only for RRGs, but you know, in general, there's no black and white answer. Where should you buy and sell? You can try to make it as quantitative as you as you want. You can you can learn about it, and that's all cool. Uh, but it, it will never be an optimum. It, it will always be um, an educated guess. And as long as we are more educated and uh, and have the odds on our side, then we're doing our job right. So when it comes to um, buy and sell points or situations in RRGs, um, I'm, we're gonna let's go over it again because this this question, these type of questions, keep coming back over and over again and it's it's obviously important so uh, we need to talk about it and um let's first have it about i think it was michael who said uh that he was watching the the stocks or the sectors that were inside the weakening quadrant and moving back up i think by now we can safely say that that is a sound strategy and the reason being that if a sector or a stock moves 
from leading into weakening or most from improving into leading. That means that that relative downtrend has actually been turned around and the trend is now starting to move higher, starting to move up. And then when it moves from leading into weakening, that uptrend is going through a correction, which pushes, pushes it into the weakening quadrant. When you're in weakening and you start to move up, that means that that, that initial relative uptrend is still in play. So that's still there. That's good. And we're now starting a new lag of that relative uptrend. So that means that it is a, a pretty good place to look for entry opportunities. Um, because you're, you're buying into an already existing trend. So that's a good one. Now, the question that Wendy asked is, in the bottom when it turns up, when it crosses above the halfway point upside, I hope, I think that that is the same as what Michael was referring to. Uh, in the bottom, when it turns up and it crosses above the halfway point upside. Um, you know, the crosses of the horizontal and the vertical axes. Initially, I thought these were very important uh, levels to watch, but more and more I'm coming to the conclusion um, that the direction of the tail, so the RRG heading is really important. And um, there is no sort of real cutoff point where you should buy and sell or pull the trigger. Uh, it'll give you an idea and you can then take it through your own workflow. And um, that is where the last question of Wendy comes in. Uh, when is the optimum time? As we said, there's no optimum time. Uh, but in weakening, turning back up, heading to leading, that seems to be a pretty good, um, a pretty good gauge. Um, so now you've found your favorite sector. Do you go into a daily or an intraday chart to figure out where you're going to buy? Um, that totally depends on the time frame. So if you are working on a weekly chart, then you could go to a weekly price chart and go into your uh, routine of picking up your buy and sell points. Or if you want to time it a little bit better, you could down go down one more chart. My time frame is much more is like the weekly charts on the RRG and the weekly uh, price charts. And that's where I sort of um, uh, put my views in. And sometimes I go into a daily to actually get a confirmation of, you know, that what I see is right. Um, but that's about it. If you want to go into intraday, that's totally fine. It's not my time frame, but you can just use whatever your workflow is to actually pinpoint the, um, the ideas that you get from a relative rotation graph. So I hope that that is an answer to those questions. And I'm sure we're going to come back to that uh, in the future because these questions keep coming back. And I will try to continue to, uh, to answer them each time in a different way, in a different fashion, so that it resonates with everybody. Guys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. This was the... Uh, last episode of Sector Spotlight for this year, the one that I recorded live with an overview of the markets. I realized that I have missed, I ran out of time to do the long short baskets. So I'm going to write those up in a blog. So stay tuned for that. And for now, I want to take this opportunity to wish you a very happy Christmas and a very great holiday season within all the restrictions that we have. And I hope to see you back next year happy and healthy and ready to uh make the best of 2021 for now stay safe and i hope to see you back next year happy holidays everybody hey grayson rose here with stock charts thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed that video if you did consider giving it a like down below maybe leave us a comment and if you're new to the channel you can subscribe at the link up above we're going to bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts